Hello there. It's time for most things Kenobi. Shouldn't it be all things Kenobi? Hmm. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Most Things Kenobi, a podcast about Obi-Wan Kenobi and all things Star Wars. I'm your host, Lauren. And I'm your host, Leanne. Did you bring your tissues with today? I brought my tissues and my very long list of things that will cause me the reason to use said tissues. (laughs) Yeah. Prepare for pain. Pain incoming. (laughs) You know we always have to do one of these. You know it's necessary because we're most things Kenobi. And most things involving Obi-Wan Kenobi are sad. (laughs) This is true. (laughs) I mean, it just comes with the territory. It does. It's funny because I named my file for this episode Sad Obi-Wan. Oh my god, that's what I should have named the... I made the folder in the drive and I didn't... uh, Okay, it's officially called Sad... This episode is called Sad (laughs) Obi-Wan. Because... Because... Because we are going to go through, item by item, all the terrible things that have happened to Obi-Wan Kenobi. At least in the in the movies and the TV show. I'm not talking about books or comics. Right, because we're, we're already... going to stick. Yeah, we're, we got to do this in like 30 or 35 minutes, so... <laughs> yeah. And I'm not even sure we can do it well, with the list that I came away with. Oh, my Lord. Yes, and I have the prequels. I'm going to... We're going to talk about the prequels first and i have the task of listing everything that went wrong or terrible for (laughs) obi-wan in the prequels and then lauren has the task of dealing with the clone wars which would should be its own series but (laughs) yeah i mean i know i was like from the smallest thing to the largest thing i was just like i am overwhelmed (laughs) there are so many things okay well let's not let's not dig around no. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> All right. So the Phantom Menace. Yeah. It's where the pain begins. A lifetime of pain. A lifetime of pain begins right here in the Phantom Menace. And some would say that's what you would say about the entire movie. But we're not haters. <laughs> we're critics, but we're not haters. I can tolerate parts of the movie. So can I. And mostly because Qui-Gon's in it. But Qui-Gon is, yes. a, is what brings the pain in The Phantom Menace. So I have written down here, Qui-Gon just up and chooses to train Anakin and abandons Obi-Wan. So that's number one. Yeah. Fair. I mean, <laughs> we look on his face. Before. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. His face just shows that for a minute he's like, ow, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> like, totally blindsided, t- total change of course of plans, of, of lifetime yeah. training. That would be hard to swallow. And he swallows it. It's the first in a line of things he's, this yeah. phrasing is terrible, but <laughs> he's going to swallow. <laughs> no, it is not code for anything, okay? Just no. Poor he phrasing. Just, he deals with a lot of crap and never, like, Never really speaks up about it. Yeah. Ever. And the thing about the Phantom Menace is a series of events happen after this this mo- this big moment of, like, Qui-Gon chooses Anakin, basically, as his Padawan mm-hmm. and says, oh, well, Obi-Wan's fine. He can do it. He's, he's fine to go on his own now. And then the series of things that happen precipitate, like, him taking Anakin on. So we have the obvious. He watches Qui-Gon die. Yeah. Trapped. He can't save him. He can't help him. He just has to stand there and watch, which is awful. Mm-hmm. And this is a yeah. theme in Obi-Wan's life. It be- yes. It becomes his life motto. Yes. Watch the ones you love die yes. in your arms. <laughs> so then after he watches Qui-Gon die, he then has to kill a Sith right afterwards and control his anger while mm-hmm. doing so. Yeah. Which is an amazing feat. Even though Maul technically didn't die but he did we didn't know that we didn't know that what 15 20 years yeah i mean it became a thing but (laughs) then he has to take anakin as his padawan after all of this so we start Mm -hmm. with he's kind of abandoned for anakin and then he immediately becomes anakin's master like yeah all in a day (laughs) 
or the yes, course of a week. Seriously, you're right. It is. It's like a really fast turnaround. Once the the once the action starts, it just yeah. like doesn't it. stop. The momentum keeps going and yeah. pulls him like right into a new pathway altogether. It's yeah. crazy. So if this had just been it, Obi Wan would have a lifetime of of harshness. But it doesn't stop there. <laughs> <laughs> We then have Attack of the Clones. So I have I have a few things on here that I thought would be bad things to happen. Heavy mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily bad, but when you add them all together and you weigh the heaviness of it all, it would be a lot for one person, let alone. Yeah. So, like, I find the fact that Obi-Wan had to find out about Kamino on his own pretty heavy. Because what's revealed there in his fight with Jango... That's a lot to take. And then he gets tossed into the ocean. Right. Okay, so th- that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. You, you just get thrown into the ocean after a fight. That sucks. <laughs> after falling off a building, too. Right? Like, it's a long way yeah, It's down. a long way. And it's stormy out, and it's not It's not like a calm ocean. So, Although I will never complain about Obi-Wan being soaking wet. Never. Never complain about Give that. Give us more, in fact. <laughs> yes. So why? Why is there no rain on Tatooine? I was just going to say, we're not going to get it in the series, I don't think. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> so, okay, so he gets tossed into the ocean. Then I have, he spies on Geonosis and gets captured, but knows more now about the war than he ever imagined, which is a lot, because he's learning about, like, Jedi behind his back doing things, the council, do the... the, the the Separatist Army versus the Republic Army that's being built, and all these mm-hmm. things. It's a lot to take, right? And then he gets sent mm-hmm. to execution because <laughs> so, he gets captured. <laughs> so the weight of the information <laughs> is bad, but then he gets captured and gets sent for Fed execution. Fed to some giant animals. <laughs> I have the very next one, has to find gi- fight giant bugs. The next thing after yeah. that is deals with Anakin constantly because he's <laughs> he's a bit much in this in this movie. He is a bit much in this installment. He's a, he's a lot, yeah. Anakin yeah, is a lot. He's a teenager <laughs> who needs wrangled. And he talk about young adult. whiny. There's a lot of whining. Yeah. There's some I mean, whining. They the the yeah. And then he gets injured by Dooku in the end, and Anakin loses half an arm. And I put Anakin lose, loses a half an arm because it was a turning point in my life. <laughs> because I discovered I like men with metal arms <laughs> at this point, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> it was a big change for you. <laughs> it was a big change. Not only was everything changed in, because of the Clone Wars, Leanne's life was changed <laughs> forever. So. <laughs> so Attack of the Clones... Not as bad as Phantom Menace, I don't think, but the information that happened yeah. in Attack of the Clones, I think, would be a lot to deal with mentally. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, emotional burden in that episode. Because, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it, Dooku made some good points. And Dooku, oh, yeah. I mean, he used to be a Jedi, so it's like, it's it's talking to one of your own about the rights and wrongs of what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course, Obi-Wan's like, he, he just doesn't, he thinks about things. So I'm sure he, you know, maybe not necessarily in the movie, but I like to think the character would think about these things. Mm-hmm. I mean, doesn't Yoda say something like, oh, we would have known if Sidious was, or if the plans were going on, if it was dark or something. Doesn't I he think just like immediately Mace, write it off? Mace Windu does. He oh, said Mace. he doesn't believe the, the, the Sith could have returned without them knowing. Yeah. And I think Yoda's the one who says... I think it could possibly happen. (laughs) Okay, so, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, I think that you're right. And then, on top of that, he would have to convince other Jedi of what he discovered and make sure everybody's on board and all informed evenly, but then, basically, the decision-making about it is out of Obi-Wan's hands. Yeah, it is. He's not on the council yet, so he's just basically... He's not on the council in Attack of the Clones, is he? I don't think so. I, d- I thought that was when he was in Return until... of the Jedi, but... Return of the Jedi. He's not <laughs> in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> well, well, I mean... <laughs> He's dead by then. Long dead. <laughs> His ghost has finally made it onto the council. It's true. <laughs> so did Anakin's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too soon. 
Uh, well, speaking of which, <laughs> Revenge of the Sith, <laughs> where everything that could ever possibly happen that's bad happens. I think we all know. Yeah. It's it's hard to get through that movie without coming out, like, just wanting to sob. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the big things in this movie is he has to deal with Anakin, period. And that can mean he's dealing with Anakin crashing a ship at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> he's dealing with Anakin killing Dooku. Um, he has to deal with the fact that Padme confirms she's pregnant with his kids. Kid. Mm -hmm. We don't know they're twins yet. Right. Um, and then he has to deal with the fact that he finds out that Anakin has turned to the dark side. And that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot if he didn't, if he wasn't sent to then kill Anakin, which he is, I mean, can you just imagine? Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, we've talked about it in previous episodes at length, but the fact that you ha you are sent to deal with your own best friend, brother, uh, ex-Padawan, you know, just your partner yeah. in every way. And you are sent to kill him. Right. Not even not even to like talk to him. It's no. like, no, go and kill him. You have to go Stop and end this. him. Yeah. Yeah. You get it. Like Knowing it, that he has children on the way. Yes. Because yeah. all of that is confirmed before he even goes. Right. And he and he Obi Wan cared about Padme and respected her. He's known Padme as long as he's known Anakin. Yeah. So longer. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Technically. Technically. By a few days. Yeah. <laughs> so then he defeats Anakin, loses his best friend, his brother, and doesn't really know if he dies or not, assumes that he does, mm -hmm. takes his lightsaber, walks away, and then has to watch Padme have give birth to Anakin's kids. There's two of them yeah. now. There were yeah. twins, not one, but two. Right. And then he has to take Anakin's son into hiding for the rest of their lives, not knowing if Anakin even lived. So yeah, Re Revenge of the Sith is pretty awful for things, bad, bad things happening to Obi-Wan, sad Obi-Wan <laughs> commencing. Hashtag sad yeah. Obi-Wan. Yeah. Oh, everything in that movie is just, you. it's like slowly falling over a cliff. You feel all the yeah. things starting to slip loose, and then they just go over the side, and there's no coming back. It's yeah. just so sad. Yeah, it's um, I actually really do love that film, for for yeah, all of its too. shortcomings, if you will. I I still think that the battle between Obi Wan and Anakin is the finest one in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, and you know, physical fight, but it also meant a lot more. Especially when you add in the Clone Wars television show and oh, all that yeah. happens there. I mean, it just adds so much more depth to everything. It does. It makes it, like, really soul-crushing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very devastating. Yeah, the last time I watched Revenge of the Sith, I was very sad. <laughs> yeah, it's depressing. Very sad. All get out. I mean... And, like, when watching all the Jedi die because oh, of Clone yeah. Wars, you know yeah. all them, and then the relationship with Anakin and well, Obi-Wan. The fact that Obi-Wan saw footage of Anakin killing yes. children, right. like... I would not oof. know what to do with myself. I wouldn't know what to say if I saw my best friend, you, yeah. on a on an image. <laughs> I promise to never do that to you. <laughs> I promise not to chop off your leg and your arms. Thanks. Your arm and the leg or whatever, whatever combination it was. But also forgot you you reminded me that Cody also turned. And Oh yeah. Cody was close with Obi Wan. We can't forget about freaking yeah. Cody. Like, damn. Especially after Clone Wars, everything yes. they've been through together. Absolutely. Yeah. There's this it's not a fun ride. <laughs> so it So there, that's not. my condensed version of everything sad. In the prequels. That happens in the prequels. <laughs> If I miss Sad anything, prequels. please let us know. I had to do it rather quickly because <laughs> the Clone Wars trumps all of this <laughs> as far as like Honestly, instances of sadness. I wish people could see how long my notes are. I'm looking at her notes right now. She has multiple pages. Yeah. And I, you know, and I didn't even include everything and stuff. Yeah. I'm going to just kind of go by really quick because it's so much. But right. 
Like the early seasons are much lighter. Oh sure. They're more they're more fun. There's some stuff that happens, but it's not that bad. Like the Gungan general in season one where oh, yes. Dooku is captured by Hondo. Yeah. Like Obi Wan and Anakin get electrocuted. Well, and you tortured by Hondo. Up. I mean, if, if we had to count all the times that Anakin alone was electrocuted, we'd be here all day. So, you know, it's a common theme. <laughs> it's so true. So, like, season two, okay, there's landing at Point Rain, mm-hmm. where he gets very severely injured and almost dies with all of his men. Yeah. Th- and then there's... Oh, go just, ahead. Well, I was just going to add the fact that he was going to grit and bear it and go for it at the end to whatever... Yeah death that awaited him he was going to do it anyway yeah. god i love he was, him i know i love that moment where he's willing to die with his men even though he can barely stand i it's love so that good. we'll have to do the whole like geonosis arc at some yeah we point have to talk about show. geonosis as a whole just someday because <laughs> it's there's awesome. a lot <laughs> then we go into the satine mandalore stuff uh. and there's a mixture, right? So there's like the bombing at the memorial shrine that he witnesses, oh, and yeah, then yeah. that guy. And that he tried to guy. save the guy. Yeah, and he commits suicide right in front of him. Instead of speaking to Obi Wan, the guy jumps off a building, and then he has to stand there and watch him die while Satine tries to comfort him. Did I tell you and... that there was going to be a theme? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's awful if you think about it. It is. But... It really is. And oh. it is a theme. It definitely is. Then he's captured by Death Watch and hung upside down, which is also a theme. <laughs> Why is it always upside down? Do they have I don't know, to be the upside down? Come on, Filoni. <laughs> Maybe it like makes the Jedi's blood rush to his head and he can't think straight. Ugh. I don't know what it is. But he's, he's going to be crushed in the giant mining facility. Where oh, yes, they're gonna... the mining facility. Yes. Yeah. And then Satine saves him. Go Satine. <laughs> yeah. Then there's Voyage of Temptation. Which is full of heartbreak, totally. where th- they're just bickering, and he's reliving his past with Satine, and realizing yes. like maybe he feels regret about that, and then he thinks she's gonna die right in front of him as she's yes. being kidnapped by the terrorists. Yeah, <laughs> like final and, words kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And they have to profess their love they're right in before hallway. she dies. Yeah. And then, lest we forget, his fucking Padawan comes along and stabs someone in the back. Like, that's probably not in the lesson book anywhere. Probably not. No. That's probably... Uh, he was probably like... Well, you could see it in his face where he's like, Anakin. Anakin. But, Jesus. Can't I leave you alone for five minutes? You gotta go stab somebody. Right in the heart. Right in the... Hey, I love you, Anakin. But don't stab people in the back. Have the sense to chop their head off or something. Anyway, just kidding. <laughs> we digress. Which, I mean, he does do in Revenge of the Sith. He Sin, does. So, okay, never mind. He does all of it. <laughs> uh, well, then there's the Mandalore plot where the woman he loves is accused of murder and he has mm-hmm. to, like, help her clear her name and mm-hmm. rescue her from another assassin. So it's just, like, a lot of, there's a lot there in just yeah. the Mandalore stuff alone. And that's just the first part of the Mandalore stuff. Yeah, exactly. It gets worse. <laughs> season three. <laughs> One There's of the Hunt best. For Z- I know. I love it. Season three, I think, is my favorite. Yeah. That and season two. I, I can't ever decide. But there's Hunt for Zero, where he's with Oh, he's got to deal with the Quinlan boss. <laughs> yeah. But he also, again, gets beat up and electrocuted. <laughs> He's forever getting his face punched. I mean, held, like, by the jaw. Yeah, by the face, yeah. It's very distinct how they always go for Kenobi's face. Have you ever noticed that? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Grievous does it all the time, too. All the time! Yeah. I would, too. (laughs) Grab you right by the handsome face. That beautiful beard with all that beautiful hair. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) So then they, like, go into the... The whole thing with like the Night Sisters and Savage mm-hmm. Opress becoming a thing. Mm-hmm. And in that, I won't go episode by episode, but generally he he gets shot down and choked out by Ventress. Oh, yeah, that ha- that couldn't have been pleasant. No, but like fun to watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then like <laughs> he's supposed to go and save, um, he's trying to save King. Katuku, I think is his name. I can't remember um, the name. He's the Toydarian king. Oh, the Toydarian. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
Yeah, yes. and he doesn't arrive in time. No. And Savage kills him. Yes. <laughs> and he drags the king's body drags out. Well, the body. I remember this. It's yes. so brutal. And Anakin and Obi-Wan just have to watch it yeah. happen. Um, That's where the floor pods come up out of the... the yes. Like there's a platform that comes up out of the... I always thought that was cool. That was a cool throne. Yes. It was awesome. And then, again, Savage punches Obi-Wan right in the face and yeah. drops one of those things on him. Yes. <laughs> one of those floor pods That's correct. on yes. Obi-Wan. Yes. Which okay. we, and then see, we... we see that, like, uh, Sidious throws a bunch of the the Senate <laughs> yes. seating pods at Yoda, for God's sake. It's very similar to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the feel I get from that, so... Very it Star is. Wars-y to Which throw... Which is such a funny scene where he's like... Yeah. He's just spinning and throwing, but it's it's brilliant. But Yoda's too small. He outwitted him there. Like, yeah, Yoda's he had to badass when he fights. Way. Small but the, mighty. When he stops the one and, like, spins oh, I know, it. He spins it. Yeah, that's cool. It's a great moment. <laughs> Tangent. Tangent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, then, then we get into the Mortis arc. Well, I was waiting for it. Yeah, and that is just one horrible thing after another. Yes, a series of pain. Yes. And, like, I don't even know how to break it down. It's like he's forced to see, uh, like, a vision of Qui-Gon. Then yep. he's taken by the daughter, because there's the son and the daughter, and Ahsoka's taken by the son, and he's taken by the daughter, and they're going to kill them unless Anakin can stop them. Yes, and he basically correct. tells Anakin, save Ahsoka. Like, let me die. Because <laughs> he said, "We're they're too strong for us. Save Ahsoka. That's yeah. what he says. Yeah, which is which crazy. I, you know what's kind of cool with that, though? It's kind of a premonition. Like, yeah, uh, maybe not a maybe, maybe not a premonition, but what knowing what we know now that Ahsoka makes it all the way basically to the end. Yeah. Of like Return of the Jedi. We know she's still alive. Um, well, and like maybe having the daughter, the light of the daughter absolutely. inside her has something yes. to do with that. Well, she always be, has that. The what if she's her? immortal? <gasps> when we love to know that <laughs> we're gonna be do crazy whole, we're gonna do a whole ahsoka <laughs> episode sometimes yes oh we're, my gosh we're gonna we, get into all of it so there's so much but yeah i think it's yeah he basically says kill kill me take me first mm-hmm. like damn that's a little too quick obi-wan like yeah <laughs> made that decision quickly yeah they made... wait but i want you to live yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, then he has to see Ahsoka turn to the dark side. Mm-hmm. He has to fight her with Anakin. He also, like, watches the father get attacked by the son and has to go yes. retrieve the dagger from the sword yeah. or, or the sword from the stone and um, basically watches Ahsoka die. Yes. And then Anakin and the daughter bring her back. But, like, that's some heavy shit. That's and a the, lot of the... heavy stuff to deal with. And not only that, but they had no idea where they were at this point. I mean, they don't right. know anything about what is even happening. Where are they? Why? They're like lost in time, yeah. basically. And that yeah. would be a lot to take. That would be a lot to take. It's a lot. And then in the next episode of the Mortis arc, he sees Anakin turn to the dark side. Mm-hmm. Gets electrocuted again, again. by the sun. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then he helps, he, Ahsoka, and Anakin help the father murder his own son yes. and himself at the same time. It is yes. just, like, the most depressing, heavy shit with all this, like, existential problems that, like, whatever happens here on Mortis could have implications in the greater universe. Mm-hmm. They don't it's even just, know. Anakin's yeah. the only one that might know, but he yeah. very clearly wants to just it, pretend none of this happened. And it's all just yeah. a fluke. Like it's crazy. Yeah. That that and, and it's brilliant. It's crazy how much shit happens in this season. Like we're still only talking about season three. Mm-hmm. And now we move from Mortis into the Citadel. Yes. <laughs> Which One of my is favorites. So good. There's so it's much so shit good. that goes on. It's one of my favorite arcs. It's up there in the top three, easily. Yeah. Same. It's so good. And again. Basically just has to watch his men die yes. over and over. Over and over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then they get captured and he has to watch one get shot in the face, like right in front of him. Yeah. I forgot about that. But you're right. That, that scene is always like so cringy and upsetting to me. It's so sad. 
Oh, and then he sees Echo get blown up. That's the moment where Echo dies, remember? Yes. And then he comes back in the last season, but that's yeah, but, where he... Oh, my God. It's so sad. That's a heavy arc. It's so, it's so heavy. But and it's then, so like, great at the Tarkin stuff. Oh, my Man, God. I, I love up. Tarkin. I eat that shit up. <laughs> well, and then... Um, <sighs> so good. Is it Master Peel? Is that his name? Yeah. The guy with one eye? Evan. Master Peel? Evan Peel? Yes. yes. He dies, and Obi-Wan and Anakin cremate him. Like, it's just so yeah, they just depressing. send him down the river of fire. A good, it's a good death, I guess. I don't well, know. Well, it's, it so, it's just... so premonition-y of what ends up happening between <laughs> yeah. the two of them that it's really... Yeah. Like, it's... Yeah. It's a, it's a really beautiful sequence in this show, like, in mm-hmm. the episodes, but it's very sad. And, like, Ahsoka's, you yeah. know, the way she carries the body and everything. Oh, it's yeah. so depressing. Okay, season four. It gets worse. <laughs> gets worse. <laughs> gets worse. <laughs> then we get into the Cadavo arc. <laughs> Which everything is awful. <laughs> to- constant torture for Obi-Wan and Rex. Yeah. The first episode is he just gets beaten to a pulp the entire episode. But he does it with a grin. <laughs> yeah, like he's doing it on purpose. Yeah. But still, by the end he is just a fucking mess. He's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> so just in, I'm just going to read what I wrote down okay, for Slaves. Slaves of the Republic. He sees all kinds of brutality. Like he sees slaves getting taken. He gets shot in the shoulder while trying to rescue the Tegruton governor. He gets captured, tortured, beaten, and whipped. <laughs> yes. With an electric well, whip. Yes, electrocuted again. Yes. While being interrogated by Atai, the prime minister, or whatever he is. <laughs> God. Um, then he's brought into a slave auction where his best friend is told to whip him. Yes. <laughs> and, like, writing this out made me realize, like, how fucked up this so episode is. So you know is. they sat around and said, the plot for this is going to go like this, and did exactly what you yeah. did, only they came I up know. with it. Like, <laughs> And they're like, this is a great idea. This is great. Let's I- put it into action, which it is great. I'm like... It's great. It's very entertaining, but it's the kind of thing where, like, while I'm writing it out, I'm, like, feeling almost embarrassed by, like, how brutal it yes, is. Yes, yes. It's, it's crazy. Because it, it gets worse in this episode. So he and Anakin try to escape. It doesn't go well. No. He gets whipped again, knocked unconscious when one of the electric whips attaches to his, um, what are those called? The shock collars that yeah, they put I would just on call people? Yeah, I shock collar. It's basically what it is. And he gets recaptured where he's then sent to Cadavo, the slave processing facility where they torture slaves. And literally the minute he's there, seven slaves are murdered in front of him because of him. Yes. Yeah. So (laughs) he's... Carry that with you. Yeah. Literally covered in blood and bruises. Like, if you do a pause, you can see there's like blood, like even in his well, mustache. Well, his eyes look and... so sunken in the way the animation is. It lo- they look yeah. like it. It was good animation. It's very good. Yeah, it's really crazy. And then they go into the next episode yes. where he's literally a slave in Cadavo, where he is the first minute of the episode <laughs> whipped and beaten and bullied by a guard. And when he shows any defiance, Mm -hmm. the other slaves are tortured in front of him until Ogby One begs them to stop torturing them. Yeah. On his knees. Yes. Like, holy goddamn shit. (laughs) (laughs) It's awful. This arc is truly something. And it's a lot. And it doesn't (laughs) stop there. It doesn't. It does. I mean, think of all the things we're talking about. And all of this happened before Revenge of the Sith. Like. Yeah. And like, it's followed up by more horrible stuff. Like, it's just like, it's crazy the amount of stuff that he goes through. I mean, you have to think of it like, okay, so he's, he is a soldier. He's going to see some bad things. Yeah. But knowing what we know, and then he has to go into hiding and tattooing for like basically the rest of his adult life with all of this to think about. It's a lot for one person. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's like torture to yeah. then have to process all of this stuff. I'm sure Alone. stuff comes up that oh, yeah. you think you've forgotten about, and here it comes, you know. Uh, um, so then when they're about to execute him and Rex, 
Anakin shows up to rescue them, and that then makes the governor start trying to kill all the prisoners. Mm -hmm. Flip my page over here. Um, And Obi-Wan can't stop him. He tries to, and he can't stop the governor, so he, like, electrifies all the walls and is going to kill all the the slaves. And then he stands by and watches Rex kill the the keeper the yeah, prison that was keeper. a great moment it was so great and like at that point after just listing all this shit i'm pretty sure obi-wan was like yeah i'm not gonna stop him i'm not gonna do it but i'm not gonna no, stop exactly. him from and, and you know you you know after all that mm-hmm. there was a sigh of relief somewhere in his body i don't care what kind of jedi he was yeah, like, he didn't whew, feel sorry. Glad I didn't have to do that one myself. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but oh my God, what a humiliating way for that guy to right? die. He gets like stabbed and then his little electric chair yeah, smashes yeah. him cr- into the hey, wall. I loved everything about it. I did too. I always laugh at that moment. Oh, okay. And then after this, we go into the deception arc, which you and I talked about oh, in our last episode. Last episode, all about it. If you haven't yeah. listened... Listen, because we go over how ridiculously horrible it's crazy. All dude. of that is crazy. He gets shot again. Yes. <laughs> so now he's been shot. What's our two shot arcs count? in a row? We got an electrocution count. We have a shot count. <laughs> yes, seriously, we should. <laughs> Punched in the face count. <laughs> Poor Obi Wan. Oh my god, that one is like off the charts. The getting yeah. punched in the face is just like in this arc alone, he gets punched in the face over and over. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I should bother going through all of it because we went through it all last. Yeah, no, we got we got the last episode. But yeah. once again, captured, hung upside down, tortured, beaten yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. yeah. And then we go into revenge, where Maul comes back. Yes, and he has to and deal he, with that. It's a lot. Yeah. They, I think there's like a theme of punishing Obi-Wan by making him watch innocent people suffer. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and wholesale. Yeah. Again, Maul makes him watch as he literally kills a whole village of people in a mm-hmm. hologram and says like, they didn't do anything. I'm just doing this to get your attention. Yeah. Just to incite you, which. Yeah. Obi-Wan takes well. I mean, he doesn't say anything. He's obviously visually troubled. Yeah, I but mean, I it's, mean, it's so. I think he was disturbing. more troubled by Maul coming back and his past coming back with it, because Maul is the physical embodiment of what happened to Qui Gon. Yeah, that well, Obi Wan couldn't do anything about. And Maul knows that and yes. throws that back in his face. So when Obi Wan goes and fights with him again, he gets the living shit beat out of him, and Maul taunts him about his failure with Qui Gon and. Yeah. If not for Ventress, he might have died. Yeah. That's a strange sentence. No, right? right? <laughs> I, I love it, saying though. it. <laughs> and then you go into season five with Revival, where, again, he meets up with Maul and Adia Galia. Mm-hmm. Oh, she gets dies. killed yep. in front of him. Yep. And he, ha- yeah. he takes her lightsaber, too. Mm-hmm. He's a collector. I don't even want to. That's sad. That's sad. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, yeah. I'll just I'll just stop talking. That's sad. <laughs> well, and then the lawless happens. Well, which we know. Yeah. That's the it's... full knife in the heart. All of these were just pinpricks. This is the full knife in the heart moment. Yeah. Because he this has is to the, watch like... Satine die in front of him by Maul, who killed Qui-Gon. I, and, like, she dies in his arms the same way Qui-Gon dies in yep. his arms. Yeah. Which is just... Oh. <laughs> which you could say if we're talking about rebels, which we love rebels on this show. We gotta we gotta do more rebel episodes, but we do. We, we, we need we to will. do some. We rebel will stuff. because Kanan and Hera, we love Kanan and Hera over oh here. Oh my god, yeah. We love Sabine. We love everyone in that show. But if you're talking about rebels, Maul essentially dies in his arms the same way that all of these previous people he yes. loved dies died in his arms. So you could say it's poetic, a poetic ending, but it's full circle for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and then the wrong Jedi where he watches all the stuff happen to Ahsoka, Mm -hmm. you know, and then we go into season seven, which goes into Revenge of the Sith. So it's just like he's had a horrible life. Yeah. (laughs) At the beginning of the war, when you think of Attack of the Clones, Obi-Wan, and then what he goes through by the time Revenge of the Sith even comes around, like it's amazing he's still functioning. Yes. 
And the reason we are going over all of this stuff is to, it, it's, it's, it essentially illustrates the character Obi-Wan was able to maintain for himself despite the amount of horrific things that happened to him. Yeah. He went on to then protect Luke after everything. Um, train Luke. There were some secrets ki- kept, you know. Yeah. Original trilogy Obi-Wan we could have a few arguments with. But I mean, <laughs> you know, about telling it, Luke the truth about Anakin and what have you, you know. But if you look at it in perspective of all the yes. things we've just talked Correct. about, then, which of course it wasn't written with that perspective, but right. now we could look back at it with, if you want, you can use that lens yes. to look at it and be like, okay, I kind of get it. Like, why would you want to talk about what really happened? Yeah, you why wouldn't. would you want to tell Luke the truth would be too horrible to say out loud. And I, I can almost guarantee we'll get even more that will lend credence to that when the Kenobi show comes out. Yeah. So, really, the lesson at the end of all of this is it doesn't matter how hard of a life you've had, how many terrible things you've had happen, how many people you've watched die, how many loves you've lost, romantic, best friend, brother, doesn't matter. The relationships Mm -hmm. in your life all mean something. And the minute you lose that relationship, it's going to hurt, right? But it doesn't have to define your character. No. Yeah, that's a really beautiful takeaway from it, I think. That we can all still find purpose. Yes. And be good people, even though bad things have happened to us. Yeah, and keep moving. Keep moving forward. Keep, you know, doing the best you can. Yeah. And staying strong as best you can so that you can keep your purpose and keep moving forward to the next thing. Yeah. Which, this is why we love Obi-Wan. You know, he's not flawless. He looks flawless, but he's not flawless. (laughs) But... Some shit has happened to this man, and yet he just continues to persevere and yeah. fulfill what he needs to do right up until the end. Yeah. I mean, he meets his end with his best friend and his best friend's son, and he sacrifices himself to ensure the safety of his best friend's son, which was his purpose, mm-hmm. after all of these horrible things happened, and he did it. Kudos, yeah. man. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Like, knowing that that was his moment. That this was like saving that ultimate sacrifice because there were so many times he could have made that mm-hmm. choice throughout his entire life. All these things we've just talked about could have been moments where he made the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. And instead, he persevered into this moment where he knew like he couldn't go further at this point. The point where he's meeting with Vader, it was mm-hmm. like, yeah, it was, it was really beautifully poignant at, you know, now seeing it in in relation to his entire life Mm -hmm. damn tissues anyone (laughs) yeah i'm gonna go cry in my teacup now (laughs) our question to you this week is go ahead let us know as painful as it may be what do you think is the saddest Obi-Wan moment. And why? Tell us why. If you can. <laughs> Hurt us more. Want. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if Obi-Wan can be punched in the face that many times, I suppose we can too with words, right? <laughs> <laughs> Punch us with your words. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, listeners. <laughs> okay, everybody, join us back here next week. We are going to dive into a topic that we've had requested by several people over and over, and we are really excited to talk about it. What if Qui-Gon lived and became Anakin's master? Yes. It's an interesting topic to ponder. Mm -hmm. So thank you for everyone who wrote in and requested this because it's going to be a fun one to discuss. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. Last week, we discussed the Reiko Hardeen Clone Wars arc. And we had a lot of feedback on this. People had really strong feelings about this arc, just as we did. Rebecca Jacobs sent us a wonderful and detailed message, but this is the point I wanted to highlight in this portion of our show. She says, I think Obi-Wan always has the best intentions. He doesn't lie to Anakin because he just wants to hurt him, but he always underestimates how much damage that can do. And he still does that with Luke decades later. And it's true. 
I mean, the big focus of the Reiko Hardin arc is the implications it has on Anakin, right? And how it affects everything from that point onward in their relationship and with Anakin and the Republic and the Jedi and it, as a whole. So I think that was an excellent point that she made. Also, just wanted to shout out one of our newest subscribers and, and listeners with a side of Kenobi is her name. And she sent us a wonderful message that she's inhaling our episodes and she her first episode that she listened to was the Reiko Hardeen episode, but she's, she's, uh, incredibly kind, super flattering stuff that she wrote to us. So we wanted to give a shout out because she is listening to us from Argentina and we have a lot of international listeners and we love you all. Thank you for your continued support and for all the comments we got on the Reiko Hardeen arc. Very, very awesome. Thank you so much for joining us here on the most things Kenobi podcast. Remember to follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast player. Plus, you can always find us over at mostthingskenobi.com. So until next time, my space twin, may the force be with you. Always. Always.